It can feel at times as if everyone in the world is far too busy for a meaningful conversation, or simply too worried about what might happen if they actually did have one. It is my goal with the Mindful Image Project to offer a story with a photo, to give a voice to a face, and to show my appreciation for what I consider to be one of life's greatest gifts, the ability and freedom to simply say hello, and then follow that hello a bit further down the rabbit hole. With that in mind, I say to you, hello stranger, hello old friend, let's talk. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever time of the day it is, where you're at, and wherever you're at, I hope life is grand and things are going well. Uh, I want to take a moment here before we get into the next episode of the Mindful Image, just to say, you know, uh, I hope you're enjoying it so far, and I definitely hope you're going to continue listening as I meet with new beautiful souls, and I can ask some more questions and take some pictures and just have an enjoyable time meeting my fellow humans. Uh, This project itself seems to be evolving every single time. I'm changing the format up a bit. Even this right here is a bit of a a change from what I'm normally doing. And uh, this podcast itself, this episode with Puya Rani Taleb, uh, I threw out almost all the questions that I had that I asked previously to this because I'm starting to realize that maybe for this project to evolve, I need to trust my gut a bit more and I need to just have conversations with people rather than script those conversations out too much. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy uh, what you're about to hear because I really think there was a lot of great things said here, a lot of inspiring moments and a lot of great intensity. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy creating it. So once again, thank you for being a part of this project. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to Patreon and donate and help this project continue on. That would be awesome, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of The Mindful Image. Today we're speaking with my friend Puya Irani Taleb. Uh, This is where I'd normally tell you who the person is that I'm with, but uh, this guy is deeper than the ocean, so I'm going to let him... uh, tell you what his his current position is so i'll say this uh, puya there are multiple definitions and job descriptions when it comes to helping people succeed uh how would you define uh your job your service and what it is that you do absolutely hey what's up everyone this is puya it's a pleasure to be on this show mindful image thank you so much for having me absolutely i have a company called new earth leadership academy i work with entrepreneurs who like to create breakthroughs in their experience in seven days and what I use is I use very basic, simple principles of success as taught by Napoleon Hill and uh, with my own conscious training, Zen training, personal training, all together packed up in one into creating one potent, powerful transformation tool for entrepreneurs who work by themselves. They don't have a boss. They don't have someone to tell them what to do. And they find themselves struggling with time management, with routines, with psychology. According to, according to uh, Anthony Robbins, it's 80% psychology, 20% skills. Absolutely, so yeah. my job is to make sure that the skills that you do have, you actually put it in the right way and create the routines and bring that 80% psychology. And I call this the, uh, the seven-day breakthrough challenge. I have this program called the seven-day in seven-day. I personally guarantee and write on paper and sign it that you will have a personal breakthrough on your capacity to take consistent action and blow yourself away of what's possible for you in terms of creation, in terms of expansion, in terms of making an impact. Wow, that's... Um, <laughs> so that's, take that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really throw that under life coach or motivation coach or... Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a okay, lot let there. Me, let me clarify. I, I'm not a life coach at all. I'm not a coach at all because I... Uh, I'm very sensitive about that, that topic because a coach is someone who is very gentle and is very like really, really ask you a question. It's like, what do you want? What do you think? And what do you want to do? And I find that although I do that in my work, I, I, I take it more of a role of a mentor, right? It's, it's more like a, like a, like a, like a boot camp in a, in a way, you know? Right. Because when I sign an agreement with you that I promise you a breakthrough, I'm committed to my promise and I'm committed to the goal and I'm committed to transforming you. So then in order for that to happen, we need to actually break through some barriers. And in order for that to happen, there has to be some kicking the ass in and pushing through resistance, right? So a coach usually doesn't do that. It's my experience. You coach you are, are sensitive. Uh, whereas mentors, it's basically they'll, they'll support you with the strategy and they push you through those tough times. And they'll, they're not afraid to basically, um, you know, like 
give you the Zen stick, is what, so to speak. The Zen stick. Yeah, the Zen stick. I've already <laughs> felt the wrath of that a couple times. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I'm I'm currently enrolled in the seven day breakthrough course with Puya, yes. which is how we know each other. Um, and so far, it's been uh, absolutely great. It's been a very exciting process. It's forced me to look in the mirror. Uh, already, within only a couple of days, I've been realizing the, uh, you know, kind of the the breakdowns that I, I tend to have, the excuses maybe that I tend to make. And uh, uh, you know, I'm really excited about the next five days. But this is not about me or my breakthrough. So we're gonna let yeah. people know a little bit more here. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, where do you currently <laughs> live, Puya? I am currently stayed at Airdrie, Canada since the past 90 days um, and I'm intending to stay here until my next milestone in my definite chief aim is accomplished and then I make a decision what part of the world I choose to live in. Previously I was living in San Diego for six months and before that I've lived in all over Canada, I've lived in Asia and one of the reasons I, I, I created this business is to be able to enable to live everywhere but I find that it's actually a new challenge because um, the traveling everywhere is actually a distraction in my experience of creating consistent and predictable results in my business. So right. it's, a, it's a big temptation for me, and we call that not being grounded. So now I actually have a business partner that really helps me to be grounded, and because of that, I'm actually settled here at the moment. Right, now, <laughs> now this is where you live. Yeah. Uh, is this where you call home? Or? I guess you could say that me and my family moved here when I was 15 years old from Iran, uh, Middle East, to Canada. I became a Canadian citizen. My family lived in Calgary since 15. I was 15 years old. So I would call this my Canadian home. I guess I would call this home, period, because... Iran is not really my home anymore because I don't have any anything there at the moment. The Earth is your home. <laughs> That's right. All the right. planet Earth, yeah. That would make sense. All right. Um, currently, like you said, you, you, were, you lived in San Diego for a while. Was San Diego where you did your own mentorship? Uh, excuse me. I'm just putting this on. Okay. Um, San Diego was actually a, 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 a tour I went through. <laughs> I put in a really funny thing on the Facebook Live with one of these headphones. Anyway, um, I moved to San Diego because I started to working with a men mentor of mine previously. She was like a medicine woman, I like to call her. Her name is Azria Cohen. Incredibly beautiful, powerful woman. Really, really amazing artist and filmmaker. And she really cracked me open to these new possibilities of life in a new dimension. So I used to have another business in, in Montreal, which was an online business where I was living in Montreal. After I met my mentor, I, I literally closed everything and I sold everything and I got on my SUV and I started driving towards San Diego from Montreal, drove for three days, and then I lived there for five months. Wow, that's a long drive. <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah. Uh, that was just something you kind of felt you had to do at the time was, Absolutely. was change your life in such a drastic way that these changes had to happen? Or? Yeah, it was all about money. Like I really wanted to master money and, and abundance and this looks really funny. Um, and I just really wanted to um, know what it's like to be abundant and abundance because I, I found myself that I was constantly, even though I had made a lot of money in the past, I always felt really scared to actually spend the money that I did make and I always felt like there's not enough and I always felt scared and I felt just there's a lot of trauma and pain around money and this person, Azria, she really helped me to be able to actually lose everything I had <laughs> in order to get what I have, you know? Right. So right. I actually ended up, I was even sleeping in my car for, for a while. Wow. Like for a few nights, um, I, I slept in many beach houses too. Like they both and good and bad. Not, like not as impressive, but very nice. I know, right? <laughs> so I, I was like, I, I was like having all these miracles. People invited me in their house, giving me their beach houses. But at the same time, I actually ended up sleeping in my car in my SUV a few nights, and I had to go through an experience that was very, very um, unique to me. It really brought me to this new sense of awareness and gratitude for having roof over my head, for the basic necessities. I've never experienced not actually having money to actually buy groceries and anything in the past until that moment. And I really put myself in this circumstance to go absolutely with no money and then still realizing my self-worth and joy and power and, and confidence despite the fact that I had no money. So I'll tell you a quick example. I would go to this party and I was invited to this party and I'm dressed nice and everything and I'm talking to this guy. He's a multi-millionaire and he's like talking to me. In a, in a sense, he was like releasing his challenges with me, and he was telling me how unhappy he is, and he doesn't have the things that he wants, and he doesn't have this, da da da. And here is me, I was sleeping in my car, not having money, right? And I was like really owning my space, owning my work, looking in the eye with power. And I had this satori, I was like, oh my God, like the amount of money in my bank account is actually does not define how I show up. I can show up totally confident, I can right. show up totally fulfilled, and I still, doesn't matter. Having said that, now, where I am right now is a completely different story. I really love making money because money is the direct measure of how many people I'm serving in a conscious, loving way. Of course, there's 
There is unconscious ways of making money by ripping people off, and that's why a lot of people have spiritual blocks. And there's also serving people using our divine gifts to earn money, which is energy, which is people work very hard and they get these things called money that we all agreed on, and they give it to me so that I can create more life for myself and for the planet. So that's where I am right now. I'm very grateful. I love to create more resources, and at the same time, I realize it doesn't define me because I've also had not having uh, money. Right, like I, I really <laughs> find that actual that outlook inspirational, the concept that no matter how much money you have or don't have, you can still you know, stand tall, you can still have the feeling of oh, empowerment, amazing. you know, that when you tie yourself to your bank account, that's a real precarious position to put yourself in. Yeah, right? anything, and it's like money is one of them. You can also put, put your self-image around your girlfriend, for example. Like I used to, um, you know, date a beautiful woman and she was younger than me and she was like, it was just cool to tell people I have an 18-year-old girlfriend. Like, I don't know, somehow my ego wanted to like brag about that, you sure. know? Sure, young, and, beautiful, got it, yep. And next thing you know, like two years later, the girlfriend is taken away or she left, <laughs> one of the yep. two. And then uh, now I don't have that anymore. And then all of a sudden I felt like, oh my God, like part of me is being taken away. So in the same way, when we, when we put our confidence and self-image onto how much our possessions are, are, are what we're doing, et cetera, then we're actually setting ourselves for basically misery. Yes. Yeah, I actually read something recently in a book called uh, The Subtle Art what is it? The Subtle um, Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yeah. And um, yes. one of the things he points in there is that it's not about avoiding suffering. It's about choosing your suffering. Mm. He said everyone tries to avoid suffering, but everything you do means there's suffering. For instance, if you go to the gym, you have to choose to suffer by getting up earlier, going to the gym. Now you've got pain in your life, but you chose that. You choose to eat healthy. The suffering is that you don't get to eat that pizza. You know what I mean? Like there's, yes. You can almost get to choose your suffering, and as long as you're okay with the choice, it seems like your life can just get only better from that point. Yes, and, and I can understand where you're coming from because perhaps this new routine is something that's, that's a new one for you, right? For me, for example, making 10 cold reaches to 10 new people and invite them to my program is, you could call, suffering in a sense. Sometimes I don't want to do it and sometimes I hate hearing no. I hate hearing being rejected. Some people, don't, some people think I'm full of shit. Some people don't accept my gifts, right? And it just hurts sometimes. So of course. You can call that suffering. But in my experience, once a routine becomes a habit, such as getting up in the morning, going to the gym, for me, it's not suffering. For me, it's actually like genuinely like no shit. It's an actual joy, like joy. Like Absolutely. I actually look up to it, like look up to the experience of it. It actually becomes a joy. So it's just a matter of, as you rightly said, what phase we are in and accepting, saying, okay, I'm committed to my commitment. It's not going to feel good at first, but I know that it's going to support me so that I can ultimately be more free and experience more joy and timelessness. Yeah, <laughs> so, totally, totally. Agreed, agreed. Uh, so you've been really active on social media. Yes. I've, I noticed that your videos pop up more and more often. Thank you. Um, one of your recent videos was actually about what we were just talking about, not taking things personally. What are your, what are your thoughts on the power behind not Look, I'm, I'm putting yourself in that position? I'm doing this, uh, this funny face. That's why it looks like that. Yes, yes. Okay, um, so taking things not personally. It's so funny. I was just... I was just contemplating this. Um, there's a great book called The Four Agreement by uh, Miguel Ruiz. I actually don't remember his name. So, yeah, yeah, The Four Agreement, very famous book. So the question is, what is my input on not taking things personally, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. here, here's the insight is that in order for us to reach this new earth vision that we're going to talk about in a second, right? Yes. The vision of a new civilization of humanity rooted in the unconditional love. It's a big freaking vision. So even saying it, it takes courage, right? To even say that, it takes this level of boldness because half of the world are, are living in <laughs> misery and like all that, right? Agreed. So for us to reach this vision of humanity rooted in love, we must come to a place that each person is able to get out of their comfort zone and share their gifts with another person, right? And when we do that, we must be okay with the fact that other people have free wills of saying, no, piss off, I don't want to work with you, right? So it's just a matter, are my, am I committed to fulfilling my mission on earth as a leader, as a coach, as a mentor, as a health coach, as a writer, as whatever? Because no matter what you do, you're going to have to sell yourself to someone. And you're going to have to risk, we're going to have to risk some form of rejection, right? And dealing with hum human being is actually very scary because they can turn around and they can abuse us. They can tell us that we are wrong. They can have all the best intentions and they think we are actually full of shit, right? And it really hurts us. So how I see this is that it is my mission. It is my commitment to my higher self. It is the assignment that I signed me for come to this life for me to do what I'm here to do. And in order for me to do what I'm here to do, I must be willing to make invitation to other people 
right? That inc- that gives them a chance to know what I'm doing. Otherwise, how are people going to know what I'm doing? Right? I mean, I mean, eventually, it sounds like you start out at a level as you're building your persona and you're building your business and you're getting out there. You said you're doing ten calls a day to people, but yeah. we know in the future, yes, a beautiful kind of transition happens where yeah. you won't have to search for people anymore, and like-minded people will search for you. That's and, a very good and point. And maybe rejection will become less a part of it in the future, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I feel like um, you're, you're really nailing the point. There's different phases in, in business. I started this particular thing a month ago, so it's very fresh and in that beginning phases of it. And then, of course, there's client referrals that comes in, and then everybody just, the momentum picks up, and from there on, it's going to become easier. Uh, but I'm just using this as an example that everybody in some way, even after my business has blossomed, right, there's always enrolling other people. Like, I've, I've done product launches where I had to enroll, uh, like I created this digital product, speaking of product creation, that's yeah. what you're doing right now. Um, I've created this project, but I had to actually enroll all these affiliates with thousands of people on their list to promote my product, right? So at every level, right. there is this enrollment process. It's like, um, to get this podcast, I had to enroll you to work with me. I had to... You know, like you had to, I had to enroll you to say, like, oh, you actually have a message to share on, on podcast. So it's all about enrolling other people to see us uh, and, and standing for our dream and to supporting us. So it's about enrollment. It's the topic of enrollment, having other people to support us. And to ask other people to support us, they always have a choice to say, I don't want to support you. And they have to be okay with that, taking, not, not taking things personally. Right. So that's the first uh, thing I would say about that. And the other thing is that, I, Mindful Image is a very conscious name, so I assume a lot of the listeners are going to be conscious listeners. I certainly right? hope so. <laughs> yeah, so I believe business is a spiritual practice. I believe business in this way, creative business is a spiritual practice. And any spiritual practice is going to be uncomfortable. It's not comfortable to grow spiritually. Everybody can agree with that, right? Uh, fully. Because we have to let go of our ego. We have to see our shadow. We have to see what a mess we actually are. All the social conditioning, all the bullshit, yeah. religions and parents and conditioning, self-doubt. You all have to face that. And therefore, being able to follow our truth and face rejection, it, it's a beautiful way for us to squeeze out all this bullshit out of us. So that we can actually see, oh, I'm, getting, I'm taking this personally. Oh, I'm getting rejected. Oh, I'm judging this person. Right? And through this, we can actually grow spiritually. So for me, it's actually my spiritual practice to reach out to these people. I actually see it that I'm being a light in their life. Right. So rejection, whereas originally wasn't something you were necessarily comfortable with, rejection has become more of an empowering thing for you? I, would say, I wouldn't go that far at the moment. No? Okay. We're not <laughs> I, still get, I, still, I still have a, a personalization coming up. You know, it's a lot easier now because I've been doing it like, consistently. Right. But like, uh, like, for example, like today I had a conversation and the guy was like super on board, but he didn't enroll. And it, it, really, like, it really was like, how can this person not see this? Right? And then I was like, I just did a prayer. Thank you so much for allowing other people to choose what they want. Thank you for serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, change the things that I can courage to change the thing I can and the wisdom to know the difference so that's the prayer that I try to tune into but yes it is becoming more comfortable as I see it as a spiritual practice I'm learning that I can let go more as I'm learning to allow other people to be as they are knowing knowing that they have the free will to say no to me and it is my total free will to ask the next, per- next person again hey what do you think of this idea hey what do you think of this idea hey do you get excited about this idea yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, I, and what you going through, uh, you know, I go through with my business. And I think everybody goes through in their business, which is, you know, I offer, uh, you know, marketing to, to musicians and artists. You know, I offer branding and I offer a bunch of services that deal with, you know, just tr- helping people understand how to present themselves on the Internet, if you will. Right. Yeah. And how to reach out and find promotion and stuff. And we can talk back and forth for, you know, weeks and the end is it doesn't turn into anything. It doesn't turn into a business deal. It doesn't turn into a handshake. And at those moments, I definitely feel frustration. And then I've learned, same thing as you've learned, that it's great that people can make their decisions because they made a decision to contact me in the first place. They could have contacted anyone else in the world, but they contacted me. And whether the answer is yes or no, I'm still humbled and excited by the fact that somebody reached out, right? So yes, absolutely. I think gratitude is, is such an important part of life. And I'm actually interested about how you feel about gratitude. Is that something that, like I have a gratitude journal. So every day I write down something I'm grateful for and I meditate on that for about five minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I start my day. So like, do you have any rituals like that in the way of gratitude? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I learned about gratitude through Anthony Robbins, and, and I know a lot of people have heard about the idea of gratitude and what gratitude actually is. 
And for some people, when, when you say the word gratitude, their mind goes in like, oh, I already know those stuff. Just give me something else, you know? Oh, I already but know. There is yeah. so much more into this gratitude. And what it actually is, is to live in ecstasy to me. Is to actually tune into our true nature. According to Eastern philosophies, uh, Sat Chit Ananda means bliss as our awareness as a, as a normal being. That's what we are. We are bliss itself. So for me, gratitude is an act of actually tuning back to our original nature in ecstasy and joy. And one of the ways in which we do that is by asking ourselves questions such as, what's the one thing in my life that three years ago was a dream for me, right? Or what is, what is the thing that I'm really thankful for or happy about? Or what are some of the wins in my life that if I relive it, it, it empowers me to remember the fact that the whole universe is conspiring to serve me, that I am one with my father, that the whole world is in me and I'm in the world and I'm one with everything. It's the state of consciousness. It's right. a state of consciousness. So like looking back on something, such as like you say you write a book, yeah, and then two mm -hmm. years later you haven't written another book. That's right. You want to, but you lose the feeling of yeah. can I do it? Yeah. All you need to do is go back to the past, remember the moment you did that book, and then now you can do that book. Absolutely, yes. Because it's yeah. one thing for you to say, I'm really grateful for the weather. I'm really grateful for this. I'm really grateful for my body. I'm really grateful for my health. And that's good. However, it, it's taken to a whole new dimension, right? When we actually go to very particular moments of our life where we, let's say, wanted to a partner, right? And yeah. I remember I imagined myself driving down Deerfoot and I'm like, you know, I was like, oh my God, I haven't had a girlfriend for so long. What do I do? Right? And I was dressed nice. And I go to this event and boom, I see this beautiful, gorgeous, attractive, sexy woman who, who we fall in love and we are together. Right? right, for example, and then I imagine myself how excited I was, how amazing I was, how I felt like, oh my God, I can't do anything in my life. Life is on my side, and all the times that I didn't go with all this bullshit relationship was worth it. Right? Absolutely. So when I do that, there's a, there's a feeling of ecstaticness, and then from this joy, I can actually imagine my future goals. I can say, just like I couldn't know how I was going to meet this beautiful partner, and I did, right? I have no idea how I'm going to make my $30,000 a month business by December 2018, but I know it's going to happen because if I just keep taking those basketball shots, keep serving, keep showing up at my best, I know the rest will happen on its own. It's beautifully said. <laughs> uh, I Actually, another video I saw recently of yours I wanted to ask you about, it was you being pretty excited about the concept that you've now given yourself the okay to go on dates with yourself. <laughs> yes. All right, so I'm going to give you a chance to explain those 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 dates with yourself well, what does yeah, that mean yeah i i noticed that um I, i'm following this book called the gene keys it's by a guy named richard Wright. it's a profound wisdom of i ching which is the book of change by chinese eastern and goes way back to before christ and it's combined with numerology and astrology and believe me i'm like a scientific guy mechanical engineering graduate like i don't i never believed in these things until i hired a mentor for five thousand dollars who gave me this book as the first step of the process and a business mentor imagine that nice. her name is um I can't remember her name, but anyway, so <laughs> this beautiful mentor, she sent me this book, um, Alex, uh, Alex Neely, her name is Alex Neely, uh, Ali Shante, I like to call her spiritual name, um, but she sent me this book called The Jinkies, and to connect it back to that is that uh, as a result of reading Jinkies, what was the question? I just lost my mind for a second. <laughs> uh, dates with yourself. Is what yes, dates with myself. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I, I look at my hologenetic profile, which is part of the Gene Keys, and, and if anybody looks at it, you'll, you'll know what I mean. One of the gifts that I have as, as part of my, my being to, to become more service is, to, is the gift of insights. That means when I'm in my head too much and etc., there's too much noise, but when I spend time in quietness by myself, I have this thing called insights, a clear scene happens. So as a result of reading this book, I realized that I need to give Puya his best time of the day where he's at his best, he's sharp, he's on the ball, and focus on Puya for having time for alone, creative process, planning, thinking, being. So I now, what I do is, instead of making my first appointments in the early in the day, I get up, I do my meditation, I go to the gym, I do everything, I dress nice, I feel good, and then I come sit down in this very coffee shop that we're in, and then I give myself a good 90 minute chunk of time with no rush, I'm just here, I do whatever the heck I want. Right now my plan is I, I quickly plan my day so it's all out of the way and then I do some creative process of writing, maybe write like a next Facebook Live, what is going to be the topic of Facebook Live, what are the points about it and sometimes I just grab my journal and I really, really close my eyes and I listen and I just listen and spirit really guides me and talks to me. Right now I've been meditating on what does it mean to not take things personally. And I just ask myself, what does it mean to take things personally? What does it mean not to take things personally? I reflect back on the times that I did take personally, and I have this thing called insights, and I write those down in my journal, 
And that's just the time for myself. That's the dated puya, which really feels amazing. This is an act of self-love because I believe I'm single right now, uh, but I believe that I will attract to myself the beautiful partner who is going to be a perfect reflection of how much I love myself right now. Let me say that again. Uh, yeah. I'm going to attract the perfect partner who's going to be an externalized manifestation of how well I learn to love myself right now. Because if I don't love myself right now, what I'm going to attract is another partner who has a lot of emotional wound and challenges and all that, and she's trying to get me to cover up her unhappiness. Right? right. So my right. strategy, so to speak, is to actually find unconditional happiness within myself, to love myself, to joy myself, and attract to myself a partner who shares the same joy so that we can celebrate together in the spirit of non-attachment. Once again, beautifully. Do you have any, you have any recommendation? <laughs> no, beautifully said. Honestly, um, for anybody listening, I mean, he, he's a catch. So uh, if you don't come with uh, a, you. if you don't come thank with a, a bunch of baggage, yes. tell that to my Facebook live. If you don't come with a bunch of baggage and you like a sharp dresser, <laughs> then uh, this is the man. Thank you. I should carry you with me wherever I go, and you just tell me all that, <laughs> and then I'll just get all the good numbers, and I go on dates. <laughs> oh, I can I can tell you from personal experience. If uh, if no one's walked into your life, it's it's out of sheer intimidation. You look busy all the time. You just, I look busy. Well, thank you. You, you look busy all the time. I take man. that as a compliment. <laughs> thank you. Speaking of busy and what I'm noticing with all of your posting, yeah. you hashtag everything. Hashtag New Earth 2038. Can you yes. explain to me what that hashtag is about and why it's important Absolutely. to people? So happy you asked me. Thank you for this. Um, New Earth 2038. 2038 is the year 2038. It's, it's exactly 20 years from now, right? By the time I, that I made it at least. Yep. <laughs> Depending on what year it is now. Um, so it's 20 years, uh, 20 year vision for me. According to one of my mentors, his name is Eben Pagan. Um, he talks about this exercise is the most important exercise your entire life you can do. He has a, he has a program called um, something around money. And in this exercise, he says, I would like you to imagine a life 20 years from now and imagine a world better than you can imagine it, right? So I asked myself this question in 2015 I, or 16 that I was. And I started to like, I'm like, oh, I think I want to create heaven on earth. And it was just like a fancy dream. It was like something that I was saying because I'm supposed to say it. Sure. It wasn't real, right? And then over the past 2016, I, as I mentioned, I went to San Diego and I literally went through this intense spiritual experience. I sat with plant medicine. I went through a lot of emotional challenges, etc. <laughs> right? Right? And then as a result of these plant medicine sitting, etc., I started to uh, become aware of certain things about life and about what this, what this civilization is going through because I really believe ayahuasca, the plant medicine that I'm talking about, is a tool for humanity to evolve. Now, I also have a lot of people who are in the spiritual circle in San Diego, conscious community, etc. And I've been blessed to have these beautiful conscious people. And, and as a result of our conversations, it's not my thing. It's actually a thing that is it's, it's a real thing that's happening in, in the new evolution of humanity. We are going as a species to a transformation. This is a very exciting time for us. Just in the same way that Homo sapiens, the, 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 the human, human beings that we are, we call Homo sapiens, has only been around for 200,000 years. Right? Previous to that, it used to be called some other androserpian or something else, right? Our brain right. was different. We were actually a different human being. In the same way, our genetically, we're actually transforming. And there's going to come a time, slowly, it seems like for us, relatively so slowly, but it's actually really fast, according to, if you look at the evolution that has been around for 16 billion years, like the Big Bang and everything, so 16 billion years ago, right? Yeah. So it's actually really fast happening in our human life. But nevertheless, we are going through a transition as on, the, on the, an evolutionary as on the planet. And what's taking place is that this planet has been dominated by fear, by separation consciousness, right? And has been overruled by a very small minority population who has been using very masculine, macho control over others. That's why feminine, femininity has been enslaved, etc. So we're going through a shedding of all this fear and separation consciousness. And we are now becoming rooted, and this will happen, into grounding ourselves in the vibration of gratitude, in abundance, in love, in unity consciousness. And I know it sounds really new agey and weird and all that stuff, but it's an, an actual reality that's taking place with the internet, with the, with the awakening that we can actually change our gray matter using meditation and the science that's actually proving that right now. And looking at our scientists right now that before you would say, I don't believe in miracles, I'm a scientist. Now the scientist says, 
Of course I believe in miracles. I'm a scientist. Looking at quantum mechanics and all the changes that we're discovering, we're realizing that, oh my God, there's a lot of things that we can't even describe, we can't even understand, that we are consciousness, and there's a shift taking place. So to come back to the, to the answer, New Earth 2038 is my vision of the New Earth, not my vision, but the vision of the New Earth, a vision of the New Earth for humanity, rooted in love, and we have new systems in place. We have new schooling systems in place that actually treats each children as geniuses. So instead of taking a child and try to, try to look at him as this stupid idiot that we have to like you have to beat his ass to find it becomes becomes workable and usable in society we turn that around we look at every child like this is a genius how can we find what's his gift how can we give him the best education we're going to have ais as our teachers it is a whole new shift that's happening in our judicial system we're going to have jails that are looking at criminals not at people who are who are bad and evil but as people just like who are mentally sick and we treat them with love and we heal them with love and in our in our juridical system, in our in our medical system, we actually start using things such as plant medicine that are actually been here a million years ago, like plant medicine, ayahuasca, psilocybin, magic mushroom. These things have been around before human beings. They were actually on the planet before us humans come. And they were doing just fine. And then us humans came, and I believe, and according to my mentor, these plant medicines are actually here because every species in the planet that tries to destroy life is eliminated. Right? right? So these gifts, I believe they're gifts, empower us so that we can evolve to a new level of awareness so that we can actually become aware of our oneness. And then we realize that, oh my God, like when I do wrong to you, I'm doing wrong to myself. We realize the teaching of Jesus that says, love your enemy as yourself. We realize to saying that, <clears throat> do to others what you want others have done unto you. All these religious teachings that have been manipulated yes. to control people becomes true and realize that they're actually universal. Yes, even, even among like paganism and like Wicca, one of the things is, you know, uh, I think it's, and though it harm none, do what thou wilt, you know, which means essentially do whatever you want as long as you're not harming yourself and you're not harming anybody else. Yes. You know, I think that's the basis of any good spiritual Freedom. belief. Yeah, to be free, freedom. We all have we all have a free will to express ourselves without interfering with the rights of others and causing harm to another because when we cause harm to others, we cause harm to ourselves. So the new earth vision is to bring that civilization, a civilization of humanity. Imagine, can you just imagine, just the fact, if you just take 10 seconds right now, if you're on Facebook Live, if you just take 10 seconds and imagine a civilization of humanity rooted in love. Imagine you have to, you not your children will grow up, your grandchildren will grow up in a civilization where they don't actually have to be looked at as somebody, uh, they don't have to go through all this trauma that we went through. According to my other teacher, Teal Swan, we have all are like a post-traumatic syndrome. We all been through this post-traumatic syndrome. It's like the people go to war and they come back with PTSD. Right, right. We all had that on some level on our conditioning. In the uh, book for agreement, we call, they call it the domestication process. Yes. This is all these beliefs, all these separation beliefs, saying that we're not enough, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to please our parents, right? Our parents use their attention like, like, like we use meat to train dogs. Our parents, with all the love, I'm saying it's compassionate because they, it was done to them. I'm not attacking our parents. But our family, our society, our, fa our family has been domesticating us. When we did something good that they liked, they said, you're such a good boy. When we did something that they didn't like, according to their rules of society, they said, you are so bad. And they took their attention away from us. Yes. So we've been raised all our life to try to please people and try to kiss people's asses because for us, attention was like oxygen. So now we're coming to a new shift right now. Now we can, through meditation, give ourselves attention because I don't need you to give me attention. I can sit in quiet, let's close my eyes, and I love myself. And when I do that, I can actually see through all these bullshit beliefs and let them go, and I realize that I'm pure presence of awareness and I'm totally free to choose what's true for me. And then we all do that, bit by bit, we are able to make a transformation happening on the whole civilization of humanity. Now, I know this is a big thing to happen, but I believe each of us has a mission to fulfill, and life is happening on its own perfectly. It's bigger than me and you. Something bigger than us is working. And when you do what you're here to do, which you're doing right now with this very freaking podcast, and I'm doing very thing right now by coaching people that I'm doing my breakthrough coaching, we're doing all we can do, and the rest is done on, on its own. You, you see how I can't ask this guy just a regular question? Like, they have to be in-depth questions. Like, it's, that was one of the most impressive <laughs> answers I've ever heard. Well, thank you. Um, I'm happy you enjoyed it. Speaking of meditation, Puya, yes. um, what are your thoughts on meditation? Uh, there's many different theories on what meditation is, how you should meditate properly. If, if there's anyone listening to this who's never actually meditated and is interested in it, how would you tell them to start? Like, how would they get into it? What's meditation to you? 
I can only ex explain from my experience. Um, in my experience, I started to become exposed to meditation through talks by Alan Watts, and you can Google Alan Watts. Oh, and I med meditation. love I'm Alan sure Watts. I'm sure you love Alan Watts. And so I would basically go and binge on a bunch of drugs, and then would come home and feeling miserable and depressed, and I would listen to Alan Watts, and I would come up to this bird's eye view of my life and realize that, oh my God, I'm not a worthless piece of shit who does goes to drugs. I'm actually, I actually have a purpose in life and there's hope for me. And then I started to uh, basically become aware of Zen meditation and Buddhism. I became exposed to the book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, which is a fantastic book. I listened to this thing multiple times every year uh, and every day, every morning for a brief few moments of time. Okay. So my experience with meditation has been through Alan Watts, realizing, and simply to me, meditation is the act of silently being quietly sitting quietly with stillness now there's different um, obviously there's different paths on meditation um, and it depends on the state of consciousness of the human being who is who's provoked by it, inspired by the idea is applicable to them there are people whose minds is really not in the in the condition that they're not able to sit quietly then there's guided meditation that are that are perfectly fine but other people there's the breathing meditation etc in my experience i have I started with Zen meditation and just sitting quietly and not moving. I was introduced to Vipassana uh, by Goenka, which has really revolutionized my life. I highly recommend if you have an interest in meditation, book a 10-day silence retreat and go in silence. It will change your life like nothing else. And that has been my path since 2011, sorry, 2010 for, for many years. And then I kind of went through different paths of um, non-dualism with my Rupert, Rupert Spur so this is the non-duality Advaita Vedanta and that's a different form of format but having gone through all these full circle so to speak I'm coming back to the basics and simplest forms right, right. so I like my teacher Dr. David R. Hawkins the author of Power vs. Force he shows a very simple meditation and I think it's so applicable to everyone you don't need any books or anything it's basically just sit quietly get your chest out and just look in front of you and look at the darkness and the blackness that's happening. And if you pay attention, you see, you see red and black dancing, dancing lights. There's a name for those. All you need to do is to look in one place and simply become aware of your breathing. That is all. Just sit there quietly and become aware of your breathing. And if your thoughts come in, acknowledge them, but don't need to follow them and go back to your breathing and be in with it. It's that simple. Right? Now, with Zen meditation, there's a particular posture that the posture itself brings us to the state of enlightenment, according to um, uh, the founder of Soto Zen School, Dogen Zenji. As we sit quietly in that very posture itself is the goal. And it took me years to understand what that even means. But basically, if we can actually sit in the Zen posture, that is chin straight, chest out, sitting still quietly we are already we are already possessing the Buddha nature the Christ consciousness in that very moment right. so this is the practice that I use very very passionate in the morning and night for an hour and I find that this is the ground of my day and everything else is around there so my sleep routine my business routine my, biz, my workout routines are all based around my silence time right right uh, speaking you said beginning of your day and end of your day I I'll call this a breakthrough, but uh, I definitely realized last night that before I went to bed, I had the option to do what I normally do, which is yeah. watch a uh, documentary, which is whatever, I'm prison or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I decided last night to listen to some Anthony Robbins that you sent me. And mm -hmm. um, I found that going to bed after that, I, f you know, I just felt better. And in the morning when I woke up, I nailed everything off my list faster than I have yes. before. Whereas I've noticed prior to that, waking up, I would wake up a little sluggish. Like I just didn't want to get up and I would hesitate and yes. maybe lay in bed an extra half an hour. And, uh, you know, one thing it's Anthony Robbins says is the moment you hit consciousness, you get up. Mm -hmm. Don't lay in bed. Don't think about it. He goes, get up. Yes. Do your breathing and move. And I did it this morning. And uh, I think it's an amazing experience. It man. is. Honestly, like what you just nailed is a very beautiful habit is to, uh, he says, in Emotion equals to motion or something like that. So the minute we actually wake up, we want to move. Yes. Um, and I agree and disagree with that to a degree. Um, sometimes in the past, I really enjoyed like getting up with the first ring, taking a couple of deep breaths, imagining myself at my best, and then stepping into that human being. You right, know? right. This is what I learned from my other mentor, Bentino Massaro. And it's like imagining yourself at your highest version and seeing a Puya 2.0, which is a very powerful exercise, and seeing your best self and saying... The minute I wake up, I'm going to step into Puya 2.0 from that moment on and boom, and then getting out of it. So that's also another tweak that I've done in the past. What I appreciate what you're saying is to just don't lay around, don't be lazy, immediately jump into your day. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, I like that. 
Um, going back to, uh, you'd mentioned the seven-day breakthrough, which, which I'm doing, yeah. and I have my own yes. theories on it, but I would love to hear your theories on uh, the seven-day breakthrough that you have currently going. So what would uh, somebody interested in this program get out of it when they contact you? Yes, the seven-day breakthrough is a, is, a, is a beautiful gift that I experienced through my own mentor last year. I've never actually had an experience of this working with someone in this particular way for seven days consistently because there's two things happening is that first of all we are, we are working with someone else who is completely dedicated to our success but talking to us in this certain way I just call it right in a certain way right. talk to us in a leadership position not letting us to buy our own bullshit to really hold us to that standard of what we're actually here to do each of us is a leader of the new earth we all have the greatness within. We've been trained by people who are unconscious and we've been living this half-assed life. And to have that conversation with someone who holds us to that vision every single day consistently has been miraculous for me. So when I started with my mentor in 2016, I basically had a business, I lost it, etc. And I wanted to start a new income and I had to pay my rent at the end of the month, right? And I was like, my girlfriend left, I was hitting rock bottom. I was doing e-commerce. And my e-commerce was just started to make some money, but I hated it, right? And I was like, I hate doing this. And I, there was another guy that I met at in a, in a seminar, and his name is Nitsan Gable, and he's a powerful, powerful man. He used to teach, uh, he used to be a sergeant or whatever in the Israeli army, right? Wow. Think about that. So this guy, he reaches out to me, and we were a mastermind. And he says, he says, why are you doing this? I was like, what else am I supposed to do? I need to make money. He's like, you worked with me for seven days, and I guarantee you a personal breakthrough. That's what he told me. I was like, he was so certain, he was so confident. I was like, I couldn't say no. But he says, but there's only one condition. You have to stop doing everything else that you're doing and work with me for seven days, every single day. And then we grab this uh, thing here, sign an agreement, like a written agreement that's saying that you show up every day, you fulfill these rules, and I show up every day, I do these rules, and together we'll do this. Within half of the week, I, I almost was gonna kill myself because nothing was working. And then I had my breakthrough. I started to enroll my client and I haven't had sales for, for the longest thing I can even think of. And my confidence was nothing. And the sale that I had resulted in two more. And from there, I replaced my income completely. And I started a completely new mastermind business out of, out of nothing. Right. It's just like making fire. You know, it's just like there was nothing and then there was fire. And so I realized the power of this seven-day breakthrough. And then after this year, I realized that what am I actually here to do? And I realized that, oh my God, like I've done personal training for years. Like I've been this badass personal trainer. I've been building all these several online businesses. I love bringing people together. I love human being. I love coaching. I love mentorship, right? And I was like, what can I do to really touch people's life right now? And working with a lot of entrepreneurs, I know that their challenge is actually accountability, not showing sure up, not fulfilling them. So what I did is I created this seven-day idea, which I got from my mentor. And I applied all this Zen training, all this productivity tips that I've learned, all these things that I've learned, and I put it into one powerful epic program I call a seven day breakthrough challenge. Right, like you you absolutely <laughs> dislike excuses. I, I know this about you. You you don't like the stories, you don't like the excuses, you like the action and the breakthroughs. It's it's not that I don't like it. I just don't think it's part of our work program. It just doesn't belong, you know? It's like this stories, there's a time for stories and, and, and maybe that's another another place we can do that with our maybe girlfriends or <laughs> yeah. with our partners or we can just one night do story nights you know that's great but the purpose of our conversation when we come together is to make sure you stand up as a leader and you show up as a leader so if you have a commitment and you don't show up for your commitment I don't want stories it, did you do your commitment yes or no the answer is yes or no so it's not like kind of pregnant it's like are you pregnant or are you not yes or no right and if it's no great what can I learn from it no judgment no shame what can I learn from it thank you for the breakdown I now become a better leader are you with me? Right, so that's yeah. when, when I hear people telling stories, the whole world have been buying our stories. That's why we are how we are. But I don't buy the story. In, in, the, in, the, in the work that we do, there's no stories. You either do your commitments or you become, you own it and you become better. It's that simple. Do you always have, do you always have this, uh, this energy throughout the day? Is there any part in the day when you do something as simple as watch Game of Thrones or something? Yeah, or? I, when, I, when I'm watching TV, I'm looking at this. Just kidding. <laughs> Well, actually, that's a very, very, very good point. And, and I may seem like I'm like this, but I also really take care of myself in having my downtimes. So right, right now, I actually have a schedule. Right after this, I'm actually going to go have a meal and maybe close my eyes for 15 minutes and just recharge myself. Right. So I have very, uh, Evan Pagan calls it tea time and re time. So it's like when I come in, I come in with full power, like full horsepower, right? And then I just go in and I close my ears, close my eyes, and I just rest the body. 
and I give my body what it needs and I keep my meal light. So the answer is yes, when I'm awake, I usually have full power. Of course, um, I also have my, my times when I really need to give my body recharging. So I, I, I rest a lot, let's just say. So in the middle of my day, there's a two hour chunk of recharging time, usually. Right. Um, tonight is not going to be because I'm going to bed early and I'm waking up tomorrow at 3 a.m. So I usually have recharging times throughout my appointments. So every two, three hours, I have a good 30 minutes to an hour of complete disconnect. Like no Facebook, no social media, no messaging, total puya time, like just rest time. Right, that's And it. that makes all the difference. That's super important. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I know is, is you are active on social media. I've seen you on Facebook. Yeah. You have a Instagram account? Yes. Do you do Twitter? Uh, I haven't got to that, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually finding Twitter to be the most useless thing. Sorry, Twitter, but I hate your service. Um, but yeah, what do you what do you consider to be uh, your daily thing for, for social media and stuff? Like, how often do you feel you need to be updating it? And do you miss a day when it comes to updating your social media? That's a very lovely question. And, and for a long time, I, I had a vision of doing Facebook Lives every day. And I kept finding myself feeling scared, insecure, didn't have anything to say. So I, I made a decision to do a Facebook Live every day, right? Right. And then I find myself getting to these Facebook Lives and not doing them, etc. But when I started to work with my mentor, he started to give me this insight. like, I want you to do two Facebook Lives every day. I was like, whoa. From one Facebook Live, he jumped to two. He's like, two Facebook Lives every day. It's a commitment. Can you do it? I was like, of course I can do it. If it's gone to my head, can you do it? Of course I can. So I went from I would like to do it to bullet to the head commitment right so I keep my bullet to the head commitments under five that's the key right right so I I have certain rituals that I do on daily basis that's why it takes a while for us to get to this level right yeah. if you haven't if you haven't any disciplines in order that's why we start with bit by bit but for me in my business I have five the, one of them is to do two Facebook lives a day so I have consistent routine that I do two Facebook lives a day it's a commitment it's like no shit like I do it no matter what and that's it and as long as something because it becomes a commitment it's easy there's just no choice anymore. It's like, you have to do it. That's it. There's no, there's no right. other option. It's like if I have a gun to your head and say, will you be able to do the Facebook Live right now? You're like, of course I can. Like, I'll just get on and I just say hi. <laughs> so what's creating a failing, uh, a, a failing um, personality trait would be the fact that people aren't associating things with commitment. They're simply saying, I can and can't do that. Yes. But they're not saying, I've committed to that. Tony Robbins calls about, you must turn your shoulds into must. That's another word. He says, don't shoot all over yourself. Don't shoot all over yourself. Exactly. I like that. So turn your shoes into must, right? And he also says, if I can, then I must, right? So these are all these words that he used. But I find the word commitment is a whole other dimension. It's right. like, it's like I, have my, I have my wants. I have my intentions, right? So, for example, I intend to have two sales every week, two okay. enrollments every week, right? Yep. I can't control people buying from me. They can say no, right? That's an intention. But my commitment is I will reach out to 10 people and I invite them to join my program. It's a commitment because it's within my control, right? So I focus on my control and I allow the universe to work with me. And I know if I just keep taking those basketball shots, I'm going to win the game. Right. When you say five commitments, are those five business commitments or are those five separate commitments? Like you commit to meditate, you commit to... Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I, I have been doing my meditation, personal ritual, success ritual, personal success, productivity ritual for many, many years since like I've been obsessed about this topic for the past 10 years, consistently like improving morning routines, improving this and that, testing different routines. So for me, it's like really ingrained in it. So having said that, I still need uh, accountability and commitment and etc so I make those decisions consciously and I write it down and then I just do it and I put it in my calendar I don't need tracking sheet for that on a daily basis because I just do it right yeah do you feel commitments should stay to a, a certain kind of time frame like should you have two hours worth of commitments like on average let's say people are like I'm awake uh, whatever 16 hours a day I can technically work for eight hours but you yourself challenged me to this and you said how many hours can you work and I was like well I can work like eight hours a day and you're like, no, how many hours can you actually work? Yes. And I was like, well, maybe six. And you were like, no, how many hours can, can you, actually you actually work? work? And you got me to the point where you were like, well, you should work on your business without fail, without thought and anything else for three hours or four hours and nothing else comes into your life than that. Yes. So when you think about time, do you see work as something you should be doing for like three, four hours without fail or only as long as you can 100% dedicate your time to it? Well, I feel like they're both kind of the same thing because when I, 
when I make a decision, like how many hours of work I do, and I and I communicate that to my support, my support, my mentor, or someone like that, right. then it becomes a commitment, right? So to answer your question, I'll just say, when I started to work with my mentor, I had a goal in mind. I wanted to create this much income using my gifts, right? He asked me the question, how many hours, just the same question I asked you, how many hours can you devote to this? I asked myself the question, and before that, I was maybe doing five hours of work, right? right. I said, I'm going to do eight hours of work. And he says, why eight? Why not ten? Right? Right. And then... He flipped it the other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, because I really want to make sure that I do it. Right. Right? I was very determined because I was like bullet to the head commitment. I didn't want to break my promise, right? Having said that, consistently for the past month, I've been doing ten hours of focus work. Focus work. Now, let me tell you the fun part of it. Honestly, I don't feel like I'm working. I just don't. Because it's in line with your passion. It's, it's, it's in, in total alignment. It's, yeah. just, I'm, it's just total alignment. The only challenging part is the reaching out to people part. Right. It still comes up because I don't like hearing no and, and seeing people and all those things. Sometimes there's resistance. But even that now with this new perspective, this is my spiritual calling to be the light in the people's lives and invitations and allowing them to choose and it's making me expand, right? That's also becoming more comfortable right now. So as far as time goes, I believe that we all, wherever you are in your, in your realm of expansion, I invite you to ask yourself the honest question. How many hours have I been working in the past week? Right, and if you've been working for two hours, you may want to make a commitment that I will work for four hours. Or if you've been working for two hours, but all your focus have been all over, you focus on two hours of focus work. So I'm all about because I'm a dreamer. I'm a very big thinker, and I'm very excited about things. Uh, and I and I just like to dream big. But now the way I think about it is, I like to set a goal that's so small that it's impossible to fail. Right. Like, set a goal that is impossible for you to Because you can always build up from that point when you start flexing that muscle enough, right? Absolutely. And, and my mentor, I have a multi-millionaire friend of mine who is a gift in my life. He's actually helping me with finances and money. And he says, Puya, I want you to set a goal and reach it. And I want you to feel it in your entire body that when you set a goal, you achieve it. And you want to feel it physically, know that. Right. And he really, and him and this, my other mentor, they're like my two eyes, I call them. They're like my eyes and allow me to see clearly and be able to make my own decision. So he says that he called it the bullet to the head goal, right? And my other mentor, he also has the same philosophy. Is that says, don't, don't set goals that you don't know. For set goals that you know, you know you're going to crush. And I feel that has been my one of the biggest challenges because, yeah. because let's say in the past I made $20,000 a month, right? And I lost the business, so I want to start over, right? And I was like, my standard is not 20000 So I'm like, I need to make $20,000 by this day or else I'm a failure. You know? And it's like shooting myself, planning myself for failure. If I made $20,000 before, that's great. But now I make zero. So now I need to set a goal to making $100 <laughs> this month. See, right? I, absolutely. And I, I'm a firm believer that um, like, I, don't, I know you enough to know you didn't lose your business. I know you enough to know that there was a shift in your life. And yeah. this shift has become the person that you are now. And I yes. honestly believe that who you are at any given time is exactly who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, and I'm, I'm really appreciative that you've given me the time to talk with you on this. My pleasure. And I would like to know like, uh, where people can find you at this point. Like, is there a Facebook page they can go to, a website? Uh, wh- where can people find you right Absolutely, now? Absolutely, yes. If you, like to, if you like to connect to me, if you like to uh, pick up some of the, the goodies that I have on my website, you can reach me at puya.us. That's puya.us. And you'll have my Facebook link there. If you like, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to uh, support your evolution. I'm also looking to add in some really powerful resources, some of my tracking sheets on my websites, where you can actually download them and apply them to your life so that you can have more structure and order in your life. I'll be happy to share that if you message me on my website or on Facebook. That is great. Um, yeah, and I have so many questions I normally ask, but I know we're like really tight on time with you. So... You're a busy guy. Uh, so I am going to ask you a couple more here. Okay. Starting with the saying, I am. How yes. would you personally follow those two words? I am. It's like the, according to Ramana Maharshi... One of the most powerful teachings of the entire Bible is the sentence, I am that I am. Have you heard that one? I am that I am. And it it basically, that's what it says, is that I am this conscious, aware being that has chosen this 3D experience as Puya, right? So on on one level, I am my body. My body is going to die. 
and I'm here to fulfill a mission and there's this world and the new earth, etc. But on another level, I am eternal, I am ever present and I never, was never born and I'm never gonna die. So the, the both perspective are true. If I say that I will die, it's not necessarily 100% true, but if I say I'd never die, that's also not true. So I die and I do not die. So I am that I am, I am the sense of presence, but at the same time, I know that I'm on a relative level in this experience, my experience as Puya in a 3D form is very real to me. There's a sense of time, sense of space. And even though we know that's an illusion according to Einstein, it doesn't take the fact that we have chosen this experience and there is a world, there's a real, the reality, there's suffering is real. When I don't have money to pay for my bills, the suffering is real. When I get Absolutely. triggered and I feel helpless and powerless, my suffering is real, right? And at the same time, it's absolutely not real because there's nothing but consciousness. Yeah. And everything is happening in my consciousness. And our life is the dance to be able to compassionately play this game full out, play this game of life, make as much money, serve as many people, make the best freaking life. But keep in mind that it's all done in this sense of presence. And it's all done. And it's all, it's all like the Shakespeare said, you know, um, a fool, um, you know, signifying nothing. That is perfect. Uh, if I can ask you one last favor, yeah. uh, would you close this podcast, this incredible podcast, I think. Um, yes. Can you close this off with a final thought, maybe a small breath, the way that we start out these podcasts, and then yeah. end it with a, a note on how you'd like to close this? Yeah, sure. So I invite everyone who's watching this to put their hands on their heart, and let's take a couple of deep breaths together. <sighs> just ground yourself and become aware of the sense of presence your heartbeat and for just five seconds let go of all thoughts and then ask yourself the question as a result of this dialogue this conversation what one thing can I actually apply to my life whether it is to choose how many hours a day you want to focus on your mission whether it is to reach out to someone that you intuitively call to reach out to and ask for help. Whether it is to start a meditation routine or buy the book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, or anything else, or sign up for a meditation retreat. Ask yourself the question, what would you like me to do, my love? Ask your heart, ask your own, your own self. And then write it down on a piece of paper and within the next 30 minutes, take an action that says to you that you mean business, that you're not going to go back to the same old you. Because according to Anthony Robbins, your destiny comes with the decisions you make or something like that. So make the decision and follow your decision with an action because action is the, it, what, makes, what makes the decision come to life. So now we can make that intention. You can open your eyes when you're ready and trust. Trust that intention is going to go to work and that your life will never have to be the same after this. So thank you very much for all of you listening giving me the time of the day. I appreciate you, I acknowledge you, and thank you for doing this. Thank you very much, Puya, for being a part of this. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.